PowerPoint presentation, but I'll start off by talking about myself and then uh, I'll kind of expand into some other stuff. Let me uh, share my screen here. Share my desktop. All right, these people right here are my familia. These are my kids. I've got four kids, two seven-year-olds. These two are twins, a three and a half-year-old, a three-nager. And then I've got my nine-year-old right here, my beautiful wife, and we're sitting here on the beach. So that's us. We've uh, just recently moved to Florida. A lot of the reason because of uh, the pandemic we were in Dallas for 12 years and, and absolutely love it. We're just considering this kind of like a, a second home, um, but we had to sell our primary house in Dallas in order to get this one. So we're, we're out here. If you guys ever want to get away for the weekend, tickets are very inexpensive, hour and a half flight. You guys are welcome to come and see us. Stay with us, I'll pick you up at the airport. I do mortgages for those of you that don't know, um, it's fun right? A lot of paper pushing. I don't know how I got into this. Uh, I was never a fan of paperwork in school. Um, but I've been doing this for 15 years. This will be my 16th year. And I'll tell you, it's a challenge. Uh, even though real estate hasn't changed in like the last 50 years plus, I mean, the process is all milestone driven. It's all A to B, B to C, C to D. You can't get to Z before you go through all of those. And, uh, and it's been a challenge learning how our money system works. Um, I want to try to polarize how we look at things a little bit today, especially when it comes to money, right? Because uh, there's two types of, I think, viewing money, and, and that's in an abundance state of mind and then in a scarcity state of mind, right? I, I look at you guys jumping on this call every week. Even Allison jumped on and she had a client on the uh, in the other room. I love that. You guys are dedicated to this and it shows because of your commitment to showing up to this. So I challenge you, you spend an hour every single week listening to everybody and you get 30 seconds to a minute to, to speak on, on your behalf. Would you be willing to double that up each week and take an hour during the week to call each other up, do one-on-ones? Get to know each other on a on a deeper level there because i have done business now that i've been with the chamber for several years now i've done business with uh, a, a bit of you guys and it's been it's been a delight because we get to know each other a little bit more especially just bouncing ideas off of each other uh with the board of directors we are always looking for volunteers ambassadors people that are willing to to help us with some of these events that are going to be coming up this year um but let's, let's jump into some of the numbers. This is what I kind of uh, excel at is looking at where we're at as an economy and hopefully breaking it down to where it can actually save you money. Uh, so the goal of this little 10 minute spotlight is, is to save you guys money as much as I can. Um, I help first time home buyers, I help renters get into debt. That's what I do essentially. And then I help existing homeowners reconfigure that debt. Now there's a purpose for that. I'm a debt manager, basically. Uh, first time home buyer, somebody that's renting is paying perpetual, that's a perpetual debt that they're voluntary, voluntarily, uh, voluntarily paying every single month, you know, with no end in sight, you're never gonna pay off rent. So to get them into debt, they have to get off of the rent uh, and they've got to get into a mortgage typically. And, and that's the majority of us that have to get a mortgage. So mortgage can, get you into a house with less than 20% down. A lot of options out there, there's even down payment assistance, although this is not the market to be trying to get in, squeezing in with the seller paying closing costs and you know negotiating lower sales price. In fact, I'm gonna show you some statistics right here showing why it might be a good time to use the stimulus. I, I, for those of you that own a home, how many here own a home? Almost everybody, okay, great. So for all of you that are homeowners, you, unbeknownst to yourself, you have been stimulated more than what you got in the, the check in the mail. And big time, let me show you. So supply and demand causes a, you know, when supply is low, demand's high, prices go up, right? So we're gonna look at a couple things here. Let me shorten my screen here. Can you guys see my screen where it says, home inventory, nothing to rent, depleted home inventory, 
home inventory in city dwindles to 15 days supply. You guys saw what Bill Greenwald showed a couple weeks back where there was like, there's no inventory. <laughs> How are you going to sell houses if there's not, there's more agents right now, real estate agents than actually homes for sale. Okay. So two propositions here. One, might be a good time to sell your house. I mean, look at Linda. She's, I did it. Carolyn did it. Linda did it. I mean, we're all doing it right now because this is where you can capitalize on the money that's in your house. I want you to think about something. When you rent, you take all that money and you give it to the landlord. When you own, you take all that money and you give it to the bank, right? In order to get the money back from the landlord, you're going to have to like sue them or something. That's, it's not going to happen. You're probably not going to win. In order to get back from the bank, you know, you have to sell your house or you have to refinance the debt or add on a second mortgage to try to tap it. So you have to borrow your own money back, right? You pay the bank, they take your principal and apply it towards your loan and it pays it down. They take your interest and they keep it. But either way, they're taking all of your money. So when it comes time to looking at, you know, what should we do with all this equity? There's multiple ways you can go about this. One, let's look at where rates are at. This is a 10 year treasury note. Now we tend to look at a little bit longer term of bonds because that gives us an opportunity. This is where long-term debt is gonna be associated with. So this is the 10 year treasury note. And you can see here in, in December of 19, it's at 194, you know, it starts coming down a little bit. And then by March, you see it starting to bottom out, you know, 0.56, low 0.52 in August. And now it has started to steadily increase. And now you're back to pre-pandemic uh, levels right here. Interestingly enough, interest rates are still lower than they were a year ago. Uh, so this is important because they're still low. They're not in the fours. They're not in the fives. They're not raising. We're, we're staying in the threes right now. This is uh, good to know because as you can see, it, it's trending upward right here. What would cause it to trend downward? Well, I mean, another shutdown, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> but the government has had to dump billions, in fact, trillions into our market, our economy, in order to drive the interest rates low. We've also put forbearances out all the way through another six months, they keep extending it. Foreclosures, they're not, they're now extending that through 2022. So they're really trying to suppress any kind of adverse reaction that we saw back in like 2008, uh, the last recession. It was 2008, the recession hit. But 2012, four years later, when the home values plummeted because of foreclosures. In 2012, one out of four homeowners were underwater, meaning that they owed more than they could sell their house for. That was four years after the recession. Well, our current... Uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank, Jerome Powell, back in 2019, the uh, Federal Reserve Bank started raising rates and they were, they called it a mid-cycle adjustment, which is interesting because I'm going to pull up this other tab here. <laughs> the longest economic expansion in U.S. history is what we were going through at that time. And this was written in June of 2020, right? So we barely ended that expansion period last year. Yet in 2019, the government, the, the entity that runs our interest rates and credit system, basically our, our money system, was saying that we're hitting a mid-cycle adjustment, meaning that we're halfway through this cycle of expansion. That is scary right now. The, uh, the fact that we are up against a wall of recession and we're hitting it, they're throwing more and more money out uh, at this, trying to get it to, trying to, trying to get it uh, to have a less impactful. I mean, we just wiped out all the jobs created since the Great Depression last summer. And we have battered that number down and they're trying to get full employment back into gear. But that's a scary thing. They're trying to create inflation over 2%. The problem is, is they're not looking at inflation with, with gas prices. Who's seen their gas prices go up? 
just in the last few months. All of us, right? We're at two ninety nine over here just on regular unleaded. Food prices are going to go up, but that's not included in the inflation index. Just, just now, home prices have continued to grow, climb. From 2019 to 2020, home prices went up 14% nationwide. Now they've gone up another 16%. So home owners, all of you that have a house, you have seen overall a $1.5 trillion increase. That's stimulation right there. That is getting stimulus into your pocket. What you do with that is up to you. You can remove your private mortgage insurance if you have PMI. You got 20% equity in just the last two years. Removing PMI is going to save you maybe a couple hundred dollars per month. Maybe you can lower your interest rate. Maybe you can extend your term out. If you've got high interest credit card debt, if you're paying out on student loan debt that doesn't seem to be going anywhere, if you have home improvements that you've got to make, now's the time to get that money, cash in on it, and pay less to the bank in interest. You can have a multifaceted approach to this. I do a market update every single month, and this month I figured, since I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, I'll kind of go over a, 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 this a little bit with you. How much time do I have, Julie? I don't have a time on that side. We're 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 right at time. So maybe oh, okay. maybe wrap it up, maybe another minute. Perfect. All right. So this uh market update will show uh what's happening in the market right now. Uh this is where it shows they've purchased 2.133 billion or tr a trillion dollars in mortgage backed securities. So get it while the getting's good. We're in an abundant state right now, but that's going to turn. That is going to turn. And when it does turn, I mean you can see the the result of it. Just to kind of give you an example here, and then I will jump off. But let me get this big. Can you still see this screen? Uh, what screen can you guys see? The debt clock? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's go back to 2008. We we're at a $9.9 .9 trillion deficit. Let's come back to 2021. We're at a $28 trillion deficit, guys. I don't know if those of you that do math, 9, 18, 27, that's almost a three time increase, 300% increase in debt that we have seen in supply. And that's only going to continue to grow. So what you do with your money right now will determine how much you have later on down the road. And if you take advantage of your home equity right now, whether that's selling or refinancing, I have seen people lower their output by close to $2,000 a month just by resetting their debt. But anyway, if you guys ever have any questions or want to just run numbers, it's, it's free to ask questions. In fact, you don't have to pay me, the bank pays me and uh, I don't get paid for trying. So uh, once the loan's funded, then that's when you're fully satisfied. That's, that's when everything kind of comes to fruition with the bank, the title companies and anybody that's involved. So by all means, use me as a resource. That's what I'm here for. I am a professional problem solver. That's what I do. I help people take and organize their paperwork and get it in line for the bank. And then they'll turn around and give you a bunch of money back. All right, guys, have a great day. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks for doing that on such short, short notice for us, Lewis. I knew you're always so good right off the cuff. Lewis can always come up with something interesting to keep us all interested. So thank you, Lewis, for that. We do have uh, spotlights lined up for next week. And then, as I mentioned, that Tri-Chamber Mixer is Friday, April 23rd. And then we do have Ruth on May 6th. So we're good for a few weeks here. Thank you so much. Um, all right. I guess it's time for updates, community updates, and thank yous. Yeah, you might got a thank you out there, uh, Linda Yo. Yeah, I just want to thank Lewis. That was really interesting. You really seem to know your stuff. And uh, we weren't anxious to sell, but it was because of the market low inventory and high pricing that we said, well, you know, we were planning on it, but now is the time to do it. So we did. Uh, we're moving towards retirement. So it was, you know, a little of everything there. Excellent, Lewis. I enjoyed that. Um, and I want to thank Dawn for her business. Uh, she's going to be a spring feverette or something. So <laughs> I thank you very much. And thanks everybody. And thanks for your patience with me. Very good. Don, you have something? 
Yes, I was going to thank Linda for helping me get all my tchotchkes. Um, Sammy with Affleck, we had a great one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you for your time. Um, and Addie Meta with iCode isn't on, but we exchanged marketing materials and talked about things we could do together. So, awesome. Very good. Great. Suzanne, you have some? Suzanne, did I, I thought I saw you raise a hand. Yes. Um, so the Rockwell Chamber of Commerce is hosting a golf tournament. Uh, so if you'd like information on that to come and mingle over there, um, I can get you connected with that. Lewis, that presentation was spectacular. Uh, I love uh, your energy with regard to this opportunity that's in front of everyone. And I hope they, they really heed your advice uh, because it's, it's going to be a game changer for our whole economy. Um, also, I had a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one with a couple of you, but we seem to keep missing each other when we're back. So, you know, those I haven't had a one-on-one -on -one with, uh, I do look forward to the opportunity uh, because I believe uh, that there's something we can learn from everyone. So uh, whether our businesses don't seem to align, believe it or not, there's always some sort of connection that I'd love to help your business grow. So please do give me a call. Um, and then I do have to run because I'm at nine o'clock, but I'll stay as long as I can. Thank you everyone for having us here. Very good. Okay. Lewis, do you have something else? Oh, I was just waving. Uh, <laughs> I have, I have some, oh, sorry. I had something. I have. Anybody else? Uh, Julie? Yeah, real quick. I was gonna mention, um, this also was included in our weekly email, but the Wiley Chamber is hosting a speaker series in partnership with Collin College that's going to be focusing on customer service excellence. So I did put that flyer and information if you want to get signed up. But again, it's it's focusing on customer service excellence, and it's the uh, all Thursdays in April. So you might want to check that out. And again, you can go back to my email or you can go to info at WileyChamber.org and get more information. Okay, very good. Anybody else? Rick? Uh, yeah, I want to thank uh, uh, Danielle. We're going to be doing some collaboration together. I want to thank Jean because we're going to be collaborating for uh, uh, the Mayfest or Mays Days. And of course, Bobby and Ed for joining us right here. And the video projects that we got going uh, with Bobby. Now, are we doing announcements at this time or coming back to that? You, you, go, ahead, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and so we have an open panel discussion, one at the uh, ANBANG, which is around North Dallas Business Networking Group, which is tomorrow in Frisco at the main event. And they're going to do the same topic on our networking Zoom call on Monday with Expanse from 1232. And that topic is Think and Grow Rich, Creating Seven uh, Sources of Income. <coughs> Oh, there you go. Good. And so feel free to check out uh, or ask me information, go to the Expanse page or whatever, and you can join us in person in Frisco for the one or on Zoom on Monday. So Very good. thank you. All right. Oh, wait, wait. Anybody yeah. else have a thank you or community announcement of any kind of an event take place that could be a benefit to everyone? Do I see? On other? Uh, I think, um, Don, do you have your hand raised? Oh no, never mind. That was my little cursor. All right, we have someone at the cafe. Yeah. Danielle. Okay, can you guys all hear me? Yes. Yes, I hope so. All right. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for having me. Um, this is actually the second time that I've had a chance to do this via Zoom, um, both here at the Country Club Cafe. I did want to mention I did very much enjoy the presentation. That was awesome, Lewis. That is I love a man that truly understands numbers. And so that's awesome. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, the gentleman from um, Richter Dynamics and Susan Duvall, I would love to set up a one-on-one -on -one with both of you. Um, I think I can um, actually help you out, Susan. Um, those of you who don't know me, I've been networking for about 20 years. So there's not too many people in Dallas I don't know. Um, and so I would love to uh, get to know both of you better. And Lewis, if you have time, shoot me an email and uh, let's try and set something up. I, I think we would have an excellent conversation. So that's it. Thank you guys.